What's up everybody and welcome back to my YouTube page. What we have going on is an air conditioner that was left way too cold so I'm going to be paying double the electrical bill for that. So anyways let's get that fixed. What we're going to do today is shoot my bow. I'm going to break it down for you. I don't have an elk hunt this year but I'm still shooting the same arrows that I took for my elk hunt last year. We just rebuilt them. I took my wraps off because when I hit veins together the last thing I want to do is jack with um, changing a wrap out. So, so we've got my arrow and we know that my bow now is set at 69.8 pounds. We're gonna run down here to the tuning range and shoot it through paper. Let's see how it goes. Matthews V3X 33, and we're at 69 pounds. We're at 29 and a half inch draw length. And I'm shooting a black gold with scent verdict five pin. This is a simple one. <clears throat> I'm not using the bridge lock system. A lot of you always ask me that question. I love it. The problem is, is maintaining enough inventory to keep customers happy, our online sales happy. Um, so what we're doing is I'm running a regular one just because I want to make sure all of our customers, you guys out there actually get the product that you need. Cause if I steal one and we're low on inventory, it just doesn't feel right. Let's run this through paper. Again, we're at 69 pounds, 29 and a half inch draw length. This is a VAP, VAP um, SS. So it's made by Victory. <clears throat> I've got 50 grains um, on the outsert and then a hundred grain tip. I'm not shooting elk this year, so um, I'm going to be running dead meats, but we still will do a broadhead tune. All I'm checking on paper, it's not a big thing to me. It's just making sure we're halfway there. If it's really, really bad, we need to make some top hat changes or something else. So let's just run it through and go from there. <clears throat> So we're hitting slightly to the right. Let's go back and get that corrected. So I took the arrow rest and moved it slightly out to the left, just a smidge. Like I'll take you up there and show you the tear. We're, we're, we're just a little bit off. And so I'm not making drastic changes. If I can't get that to fix, then we're gonna go in and adjust the arrow overall. Let's run it and see. bring you up here and let you see the differences in the two. I mean, I moved half a click. And so we know we're not, we're not really messing with an arrow spine. Um, so this is to the right. This is my correction. I have a half a click. So it brought it in that much. We're gonna make another click over and then see if we can't get it uh, dialed in to, to perfect. I just made a uh, full click, not just, so these are micro adjusts. When I say half a click, like it doesn't move a full bar and it's half a bar. So. We went a full bar over. Let's see what we do here. There we go. Let's shoot that one more time. It looks like we did good, had a weird tear. I'm gonna shoot one more time just to make sure. Um, <clears throat> Yeah, don't do that at home, people. Don't. I don't know that you could have a better bullet hole than we just got guys it is absolutely money and a half so <clears throat> we were tearing right tearing right and this one i had a little bit of a grip issue and it looks like we went a little bit to the um to the left and so that's where we hit in there it looks like we nailed it and if there's any weird audio in there someone's trying to call me so what we're gonna do now is we're gonna go grab a broadhead and we're gonna get a little bit of a broadhead tune. We're back now with the broadhead fill point from G5. I'm shooting a, um, a, a dead meat. I really like them. I'm shooting antelope and mule deer this year and whitetail. And so this will be the perfect um, 
broadhead for me to use. If I do wind up getting an LTAG, I have no concerns of using it. So let's roll this. We're gonna shoot a field point first, and then we're gonna shoot a um, broadhead, and we're gonna see how it hits, and then we'll make adjustments from there. We will then, um, the second video that will follow this video up is of the actual tuning out to distance. So I want y'all to watch that video, but this is video one. Video two will actually be out at the range. We're gonna wait till it cools down. It's about 115 degrees here. So we're gonna go shoot distance when it's cooler. So that hit to the left of the dot. We're shooting about a quarter size dot. And so let's go for uh, the fill point now. Uh, bad group, bad shooting. We're gonna shoot again. There's just a no bull crap video here. I want you to actually see what I'm doing. I'm setting my bow down. I'm gonna go grab um, those and bring them back. Fill point hit high on that one, um, a considerable difference. I'm gonna make sure that wasn't me. I'm actually gonna turn my hat around because I never hunt with a hat that way anyways. But uh, let's go ahead and do that. Just make sure I get a solid anchor, good follow through. We're gonna shoot fill point first. We're aiming for the orange dot down the range. Obviously we made some adjustments to the rest when we ran it through paper. And so what we're gonna do now is we're just gonna aim for that spot and hopefully hit the same So we shot to the left and low, which we did that a second ago at the fill point. So that's pretty consistent. Let's go ahead and run the broadhead now. I'll take it. Let's go down there. Just what I wanted to check to see is if how close we were and we'll make more adjustments as we go out to further distances. So this gives me a good starting point at 20. Um, not a big group at all and we do expect better but as you can tell I mean you can put one finger in between them and I do I do expect y'all to do better what our goal is going to be in the end for us to be tapping a dot that big with both our broadhead and our fill point so stay along, tune into part two, which will actually be out at distance shooting those broadheads there. So thanks for following along. Make sure you subscribe and like the video. It helps us. We do this for free for y'all to make sure that we can help teach you. Uh, we will maybe follow our fill point with the rest um, just to see if it makes any changes, but let's do that at distance in video two. So 281. What we'll do is we'll take the best out of these, grab a sight tape and we'll actually test it on the video number two. So 281, 281. Um, we'll go with 281 and consider 284 a fluke. So those are your speeds. Let's check out what that arrow weight was. Again, this is a VAP SS. Uh, V1 300, uh, we got 50 grains and then a 100 grain tip. And we're at 471.4 at 281 feet per second. That's plenty for what we're doing. Uh, again, 69 pounds, we have three of the AA hybrids. I run these because you don't have to prep them. They fly just like the Maxes. I have no issues with them um, and they're super quick to fletch.